Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So in today's session also, we'll pick up some finance currents and out of them, our focus will be on understanding some new concepts, on learning about some new concepts. So before moving on to question number one, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our Telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates follow our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So let's not waste any time and just move on to question number one. So the question says, what does it refer to over here? So they, are, uh, they have given two statements over here and we have to identify the concept which is being discussed. Uh. So let's just read them one by one. The first one says, it's a long-term strategy in which the investors buy and hold a diversified mix of assets in an effort to match and not beat the market. So what they are talking about, they are talking about a long-term strategy of buying and holding the assets. The second statement says it's a thoughtful, time-honored philosophy that believes that the stock markets experience drops and bumps. So rather than trying to outsmart it, the best course is to mirror the market in your portfolio, usually with investments based on indexes of stock and then sit back and enjoy the ride. So what they are talking about, they are talking about an investment strategy. So an investment strategy is being talked about. What happens in this very strategy? So the strategy talked about is passive investing. So the answer is option A. What happens in passive investing is it's a long term strategy where you buy some assets and or some other investment vehicles and you try to hold them for a longer time period. So your focus is not on ga uh, gaining in short term uh, or reaping the benefits of short term fluctuations in the prices. Rather, you purchase the assets and you hold it for longer time period so that later on you can reap some returns. Now here you are not trying to outsmart the market. What happens if you buy on daily basis, you buy, sell, like you are buying and selling stocks daily. In that case, you are trying to outperform the market. But when you are not buying and selling daily or very frequently, rather you are holding the assets for a longer period of time and the assets which you are having, you are having a portfolio of assets. In different diversified assets, you have made your investments so that you can reap the diversification benefits. Your risks can reduce and your returns can be maximized. So, this is a long-term strategy. Our focus is not on how we can daily buy and sell karke profits reap kare. what we try to do is we try to mirror the market okay we try to analyze what can be the long term trend of the market and based on that we buy and we hold some assets so that later on we can reap the benefits one of the major ways of investing passively is to invest in some assets which replicate an index so, aap ek aise fund mein invest kar do, jo further index mein invest karega, ya aise assets mein invest karega, jo koi index ko represent kar rahe hai. Now, we have different indexes, we have Nifty, we have uh, Sensex, they represent different stocks, okay. When you are investing in stock of different industries, of different types of companies, then uh, different assets get collected in your portfolio and your risks get diversified and there are more chances of earning better returns. So the, that is the very focus of passive investing that you invest in a diversified portfolio so that you can earn returns in a long term. Further, let's talk a bit more about passive investing. So it's a very common kind of an investing where you are buying an index fund. This is a very good example of index fund. Mein invest karo. So what is index fund? What is exchange traded fund? How they differ? This will be covered in the second question which I'll be discussing. So index funds or exchange traded funds are a very passive investing ka ek acha option. Hai. Here what is the focus? The focus is on mirroring a index, some kind of a segment of the financial market. 
पैसिव इन्वेस्टिंग इज ऑपोजिट ऑफ एक्टिव इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट में इन्वेस्टमेंट में हम क्या करते हैं हम शॉर्ट टर्म गेन्स अर्न करने की कोशिश करते हैं वी ट्राई टू बाय एंड सेल ऑन डेली बेसिस ऑन फ्रीक्वेंट बेसिस सो दैट वी कैन रीप द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ द शॉर्ट टर्म फ्लक्चुएशन इन द प्राइजेस शॉर्ट टर्म में प्राइजेस डिफर कर रहे हैं तो जब प्राइस कम है बाय कर लो ज्यादा है सेल कर दो ताकि हमें गेन हो सके दैट इज योर एक्टिव इन्वेस्टिंग ओके एंड इन एक्टिव इन्वेस्ट think the amount of risks which you have to bear the volatility is quite high but in passive investing we are not outperforming the market rather we are going with the flow jaise market ja rahi hai aap uske sath invest kar dete ho and thode time baad ja ke aap apni investments ko further fir withdraw karte ho so this believes in the secret uh, to this uh, kind of investing believes that the secret to boost your returns is by doing little buying and selling that is minimal trading in the market sab kam se kam trading karo but assets khareed ke rakho and diversified portfolio bana ke rakho so this statement has already been covered in the question and the last one says that maintaining a well diversified portfolio is likely to help us okay it's important in successful investing and a great way of doing passive investing is indexing jahan pe aap diversification ke benefits reap karte ho so what's the basic difference between the passive investing and the active investing i dono ek dusre ke opposites hain active investment mein hum kya karte hain active investing the investor is engaging in frequent regular buying and selling so that you can outperform the market and get profit from the short term changes that are taking place in prices lekin agar aapko short term mein day to day basis pe buying and selling karni hai then that it is very important that you have thorough knowledge of the market a deeper analysis a more better expertise because if you are having that expertise that knowledge then only you will know when i should invest in this stock or in, in this asset and when i should withdraw so a deeper analysis of these financial aspects is required when you have to frequently buy and sell any stock any bond or any other asset so this is the basic difference between passive and active investing so uh, the answer to this question was option a passive investing now let's move on to question number 2 So the second question says which of the following statements are correctly related to the index funds so we'll read these statements later first let's discuss about the index funds i just mentioned that index fund and the exchange traded funds these are two very good options of doing the passive investing ye passive investing ke bahut acche options hain but does it mean that both of them are the same or if they are different then what's the difference इनके बीच का क्या मेजर डिफरेंस है सो लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द इंडेक्स फंड फर्स्ट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इंडेक्स फंड ये एक तरीका का फंड है जो आपके उन असेट्स में इन्वेस्ट करता है जो कोई इंडेक्स को रेप्लीकेट कर रहे हैं इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ पोर्टफोलियो दैट मैचेस दिट्यूएंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट इंडाइस लाइक योर सेंसेक्स और निफ्टी एक्सेट्रा So what is happening in an index fund? It's like a mutual fund. What does a mutual fund do? It pools the money of investors and then it invests in different assets. Similarly, if I talk about index fund, it is also a portfolio of stocks. Okay, here also what we are doing, we are investing in different stocks, different bonds, which mimic the performance of some index. So those assets, to him, who is he index linked? Him. Now, what is the benefit of index fund? they are having lower expenses and lower fees vis-a-vis the actively managed funds jo hum actively jin mein daily deal karte hain uske comparison mein jo index funds hain unke expenses fees kam hoti hain because they are not that actively managed now if i talk about uh, exchange traded funds so as the name suggests they are the funds that are traded on the exchanges so what are how what is happening in exchange traded funds here also we have a portfolio of assets a basket of assets but those assets are traded on an exchange like we trade the equity or the securities in a stock exchange so inko hum waise hi buy and sell kar sakte hain exchange mein jaise ki hum regular stocks ko karte the but if i talk about index funds they are like mutual funds which cannot be traded on an exchange on a day to day basis 
रादर उनका जो प्राइस होगा वो डे के एंड में डिटरमाइन होगा वी हैव म्यूचुअल फंड्स हुज नेट असेट वैल्यू वी डिटरमाइन सिमिली सिमिलरली फॉर इंडेक्स फंड आल्सो वी डिटरमाइन अ वैल्यू एट द एंड ऑफ द डे सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द एक्सपर्ट्स बोथ ऑफ दीज इंडेक्स फंड्स एंड द एक्सचेंज ट्रेडेड फंड्स आर क्वाइट गुड for those who are thinking to invest for a bit longer term period okay we know that passive investing is for a longer time period but these instruments come with their own set of pros and cons okay somehow they differ like i told you index fund is working more like a mutual fund where your portfolio is created and it represents some kind of an index the problem is that you can buy them at a price which prevails at the end of the day but this limitation of index fund is removed by the exchange traded funds to so, inko aap buy and sell kar sakte ho jaise ki aap normal securities ko karte ho aur accordingly unka price determine ho jayega so they have to be listed on the exchanges and you can trade them like you trade the securities let us have a deeper look at some more differences between the two so if i talk about the parameter that how they are traded we have already discussed exchange traded funds are traded like a stock is traded so you can buy sell them like you sell or buy the stocks on an exchange but if i talk about these index funds they are like the mutual funds to inko aapne agar kharidna hai ya aapne inko sell karna hai to inka ek price set hoga at the end of the trading day you can buy and sell them only at that price that is determined at the end of the trading day so pricing ki agar hum baat kare uh the pricing of exchange traded funds is done like that of the shares but index funds ki uh, the prices is that are determined just like that of a mutual fund where you determine the value at the end of the day now what can be the factors that affect your prices for exchange traded funds your demand and supply like we demand the stocks and uh, the supply available actually affects the prices similarly is for the exchange traded funds but for index fund we have different assets which are there in the where the fund is investing jo portfolio mein aapke assets hain unki kya value hai aapke fund ki kya net asset value hai those are the things that will determine your prices now let's talk about the expense ratio kitna aapko expenses incur karne padte hain what's the level of expenses which you have to incur on uh, using on investing using these funds so if i talk about the exchange traded funds the charges which you have to pay for them are usually less vis-a-vis the amount of charges which you have to pay if you invest in an index fund but it does not mean that you will just see okay exchange traded fund mein to kam hame expenses incur karne pad rahe hain to hum wahan invest kar de this should not be your approach there are some other expenses associated with the exchange traded funds they are trading on they are being traded on an exchange so aapko uske liye dmat account khola padega you need to incur certain such expenses as well so you should account for the expenses first ki agar aap yahan invest karoge to kitna aapko expenses incur karne padenge you should keep a check on it and accordingly decide if you want to invest in an exchange traded fund or you want to invest in an index fund Now let's talk about the tracking error. So what is this tracking error? Now these assets are replicating some or the other kind of an index. So us index se aapka fund ki value kitni diverge kar rahi hai? That extent is measured by the tracking error. It's the divergence of an index fund from the index it's trying to replicate. So if I talk about the exchange traded funds, their tracking error is also lower vis-a-vis your index fund. so this is the basic difference between the two the main thing is ki exchange traded funds jo hai aap unhe buy and sell kar sakte ho exchange mein jaise ki aap stocks ko karte ho but index funds are more or less like mutual funds jinko aap stock exchanges pe trade nahi kar sakte now if we move back to the question and identify the correctly related statements which are correctly related to the index fund The first one says that an index fund it is a portfolio of stocks or bonds which are designed to mimic the composition of a financial market index. This statement is absolutely correct. The second one says they can be traded through throughout the day like stocks on an exchange. No, we can't trade the index funds but the exchange traded funds. And the third one says they can be bought and sold for a price at the end of the trading day. Yes, this is correct. So the first and third statement is correct. Answer is option C. Now let's just move to our third question. So this is the third question, which says the concept of 
significant economic presence was introduced in the India's domestic tax law in 2018 with an intent to bring the non-residents who operate uh, in the online and digital space within the ambit of the India sourced income. However, the concept of SEP remained inapplicable because the threshold which are required to constitute the significant economic presence were not prescribed. Through a notification dated 3rd May 2021, the government has prescribed these thresholds which will come into force from 1st April 2022. So, which of the following state the correct transaction and user thresholds? So, here a new concept is being talked about somehow related to taxation and that concept is significant economic presence. So, let's first discuss this concept. What they are saying here is that the firms, the, some companies or some non-residents who are under the ambit of significant economic presence, they will their income will be taxed in India. Okay, so let's discuss a bit about this concept and then we will identify the answer to this question. So what is SEP? SEP stands for your significant economic presence. Here we try to identify those businesses, those MNCs, those startups or those non-residents who are having significant economic presence in India. Kafi achi economic presence hai unki India mein. That means they have a good business connection in India. So the firms which satisfy the criteria jo unko significant economic presence ke liye eligible banata hai, jo firms us criteria ko fulfill karte hai, it is considered that they are having business connection in India. And if they are having business connection in India, their income will be taxed in India. So that is what this concept talks about. Ki 2018 mein in jo Indian tax law hai, it focused on bringing the firms under this ambit and those firms which will be under this ambit, especially the online firms who are conducting the business on the digital platforms, the e-commerce firms, the online streaming firms, your Netflix, Facebook or other such e-commerce firms, they will be their income will be sourced in India. So non-residents who have SEP, who fulfill the SEP criteria, they will be considered to have a business connection in India and their income will be taxable in India. But there is one exception which I'll discuss further, which is somehow related to tax treaty. So we'll discuss this also. But what was the problem was with SEP? SEP ke saath ye problem thi ki jo bhi criteria tha unka, whatever criteria they had, the threshold limits of that criteria were not specified when this law came up in 2018. That's the reason why we were not able to implement it. So now, recently, the government has given those thresholds. So those thresholds say that if you are conducting this much amount of business in India or if you are having this many users in India, then you will be considered to have a business connection in India and your income will be taxed in India. So let's just look at these thresholds. Two type ke thresholds hai. There are two types of thresholds. First one is your transaction threshold. Ki kitne amount ki aap transactions kar rahe ho India mein. Second is the user threshold, which means kitne users hai aapke India mein. So if I talk about this, a non-resident will be considered that he has a special, a significant economic presence in India if he satisfies either of the following situations. So, here are two criteria given. In this case, any either of these uh, criteria if gets fulfilled, then it is considered that you have a significant economic presence. The first is with respect to the amount of transactions. So, if the amount exceeds 2 crore rupees, how much? 2 crores. And if the number of users is more than 3 lakh in India, then it is considered that you have significant economic presence. So let's just read about these. The transaction threshold says that the transaction with respect to the goods, with respect to the services or the property, which a non-resident uh, carries out with any person in India. It can also include that you are downloading some data or you are downloading some software in India. Then the amount of payments with respect to such transactions exceed 2 crores. And if I talk about the user threshold, then any entity that systematically and continuously does business 
विथ थ्री लैख और मोर नंबर ऑफ यूजर्स इन इंडिया तो सिस्टमैटिकली और कंटिन्यूसली आप बिजनेस कर रहे हो नाउ लेट्स मूव हेड फर्दर वॉट टाइप्स ऑफ इनकम विल बी टैक्स अंडर दिस सो द इनकम टैक्स लॉ हैज अमेंडेड बीन रिसेंटली अमेंडेड टू प्रोवाइड द इनकम विच विल बी कवर्ड अंडर योर एस सी पी क्राइटेरिया सो द इनकम विच यू आर अर्निंग फ्रॉम एडवर्टीजमेंट्स एंड दोज एडवर्टीजमेंट्स आर टारगेटेड एट द इंडियन रेसिडेंट कस्टमर्स और दोज कस्टमर्स विच आर एक्सेसिंग और यूजिंग दैट एड यूजिंग द इंडियन आई पी एड्रेस सो आप कोई एडवर्टीजमेंट्स दे रहे हो जो इंडियन रेसिडेंट जिसके कस्टमर्स इंडियन रेसिडेंट्स हैं या फिर वो रेस वो कस्टमर्स हैं जो इंडिया का आई पी एड्रेस यूज कर रहे हैं देन इनकम फ्रॉम दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स विल बी covered under this other than that if you are selling some data which you have collected from the indian residents or those persons who use indian ip address then us sale of data se jo aapko income aa rahi hai that will be covered and the third thing is that if you are selling some goods and services using data if you are selling goods and services and you are utilizing the data from the indian resident or persons of indian ip address then वो सेल ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज से जो इनकम होगी दैट इज आल्सो कवर्ड अंडर दिस एम्बेट नाउ व्हाट हाउ इज दिस गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट ओके एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू सम एमएनसी सम स्टार्टअप्स हु विल बी कवर्ड अंडर द सिग्निफिकेंट इकोनॉमिक प्रेजेंस क्राइटेरिया दे विल बी टैक्स इन इंडिया सो उनको इंडिया में कॉम्प्लेक्स टैक्स स्ट्रक्चर के थ्रू होके गुजरना पड़ेगा दीज न्यू रूल्स विल ब्रिंग दोस कंपनीज अंडर द कॉम्प्लेक्स मेज ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ द टैक्स प्लानिंग and they can they are likely to see a rise in their taxes what taxes they have to pay they may see a rise in that it would bring the income of non residents who operate on the online platforms on the digital space within the ambit of the indian sourced income if i talk about it further there is an exception which i said i just told you so there are some countries with which india has a tax treaty okay where they in order to avoid double taxation they have agreed that okay this income will be taxed in which country so in that very case the companies or the non resident which belong to those countries with which we have tax treaty to them these thresholds are not applicable wo sep ke criteria ke under nahi aayenge so the thresholds of sep have been notified and they will not be applicable to non residents or your foreign companies okay that are eligible to avail benefits of tax treaty entered with the with india why it is so because if they are having tax treaty their income will be taxed where they have the permanent establishment okay if they have in india or if they have it in the other country with which we have tax treaty just wajah se ek exception hai now if you try to analyze these criteria there is a lot of ambiguity it's not clear what the systematic and continuous business mean moreover at times it is unclear whether the sale of physical goods also will be covered under this or not so more clarity is needed with respect to this scp thing all right so now if i move back to the question i hope this concept is clear i'll just tell you it once again in brief जो भी कंपनीज हैं जो डोमेस्ट जो डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स के थ्रू ऑपरेट कर रही हैं विच आर रनिंग थ्रू द ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म्स लाइक ई कॉमर्स ऑनलाइन स्ट्रीमिंग ओके इफ द अमाउंट ऑफ ट्रांजैक्शन इज मोर देन टू करोड़ एंड इफ द नंबर ऑफ यूजर्स इन इंडिया इज मोर देन थ्री लैक्स देन इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड कि उन कंपनीज की सिग्निफिकेंट इकोनॉमिक प्रेजेंस है इंडिया में उनका बिजनेस कनेक्शन है इंडिया में एंड दे विल बी टैक्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंडियन टैक्स लॉस और सो दिस इज द होल क्राइटेरिया इसकी वजह से कहीं ऐसी फर्म्स होंगे एम होंगे स्टार्टअप्स होंगे और नॉन रेसिडेंट्स होंगे जिनका टैक्स बढ़ जाएगा सो इफ आई मूव बैक टू द क्वेश्चन वी हैड टू आइडेंटिफाई दी करेक्ट थ्रेश होल्ड सो द आंसर टू दिस इज ऑप्शन डी वेयर द ट्रांजेक्शन थ्रेश होल्ड इज टू करोर्स एंड यूजर थ्रेश होल्ड इज थ्री लैक यूजर्स नाउ लेट्स जस्ट मूव ऑन टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे This question says that the State Bank of India and the European Investment Bank have agreed to back an initiative of 100 million euros for new high impact climate action and sustainability business financing. So the key word here is sustainability business financing. SBI and this European Investment Bank will together support a fund called NEF Fund 2 where this 100 million amount will be invested in the 
small medium enterprises and it will provide the growth capital the expansion cap expansion capital to those companies that offer some of solutions like clean energy electric vehicles your efficient use of raw materials water and other such projects in india so what you have to answer over here is you have to identify the category of funds to which this nee fund 2 belongs so what they are talking about they are talking about a fund which has been created and it's going to invest in the firms provide those fund firms the capital which offer some solutions which are good for the environment aapko identify karni hai category to which this nee fund 2 belongs so this nee fund 2 ek tarah se ek mutual fund hai ek fund hai okay koi investment vehicle hai so aapko identify karna hai which what is the type of that investment vehicle so if i talk about the type the answer to this question is option b that it is a green fund so let's study a bit about this green fund thing green fund ek fund hai it is a fund so it is going to be like an investment vehicle like we have mutual funds so it's an this investment vehicle like a mutual fund where the invest where the fund is used to make investment paisa ikhatta hua hai us paise ko aapne kahi invest karna hai to ye ek fund create ek ek type ka fund hai jo kahi invest karega so because it is a green fund where it is going to invest it is going to invest in those firms which do something which is good for the environment those firms which are fulfilling their environmental responsibility for example if i uh, come up with a startup where i start manufacturing some uh, vehicles which are uh, electronic vehicles which are environment friendly which don't pollute the environment so i as a startup needs funding so these green funds can invest in me they can buy the shares of my company which will provide me the capital which i can use in my business and that is a fund so they uh, that can be used to invest in my company so uh, that is what's happening over here so jo fund aapke un businesses mein invest kiya jata hai which work for environment or which do something which supports the environment like energy conservation some water management waste management sustainable living doing something for solar energy wind energy or utilizing them efficiently that kind of fund is a green fund जो पैसा रेस किया हुआ किसी ऐसी फर्म में इन्वेस्ट हो जो इन्वायरमेंट के अच्छे के लिए वर्क कर रही है दैट इज अ ग्रीन फंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस वेरी केस हेयर स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड यूरोपियन बैंक हैव क्रिएटेड अ फंड बेसिकली अ ग्रीन फंड विद विच इज नेम्ड एज नी फंड टू इट्स अ हंड्रेड मिलियन यूरो फंड सो ये पैसा जो है ये सस्टेनेबल बिजनेस फाइनेंसिंग में यूज होगा इट विल बी यूज टू इन्वेस्ट इन दोज फर्म विच आर वर्किंग फॉर द इन्वायरमेंट तो उन फर्म्स को जो भी स्टार्टअप्स हैं या जो भी कंपनीज हैं जो क्लाइमेट uh, के लिए वर्क कर रहे हैं या सस्टेनेबली वर्क कर रहे हैं उनको उनके इक्विटी में उनके स्टॉक्स में ये पैसा इन्वेस्ट होगा सो दे कैन रेज द मनी यूजिंग द इक्विटी फाइनेंसिंग विच दे विल गेट फ्रॉम दीज ग्रीन फंड्स so as these two banks will support this fund which will unlock the climate action and sustainability investment by business through new equity financing so jitne bhi aapke small medium enterprises hai unko paiso ki zarurat hai they need the capital for growing for expanding their businesses so they will be provided this capital but with the condition that they are working with some solutions for clean energy for electric vehicles for raw material for better water utilization and all such things so it will enable the innovative businesses emerging companies to fund their growth through the equity instruments so this fund will be managed by sbi cap ventures sbi cap ventures ek investment company hai sbi group ki okay so it operates as an investment company it focuses on equity investment in small and mid sized businesses which work for sustainable development so we already answered this question the answer was option b this was all for today's session i hope you found this session to be useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much